Hey y'all, it is Naomi with Ninos in Nature and I am going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to make your very own cute little Waldorf heart pocket doll. It is perfect for any gift, Valentine's Day or otherwise, and you only need a few simple materials. So what I have, I have an old pink t-shirt. You could do any color you want, but I figured I have an old pink t-shirt. Why not keep it Valentine's Day themed? This is a great way to use up old baby clothes or anything you want to turn into a nice special memory. I have some wool. I love nice using organic wool. If you don't have wool on hand, literally you could use cotton balls. No shame, use what you have. Um, I have something, look at this ginormous roll. This is called cotton stocking it. Now you can buy something like this, it's called doll head tubing. And I think you get about this much for $10. I got this entire roll, this is medical grade cotton stocking net for 12 bucks. So I could literally make thousands of dolls with this. So I have this, it's length if you need it. Um, you can also use an old white sock, right? I'm gonna show you, you can use whatever you have on hand. You will also need a nice fabric for the doll's head. So this has some stretch to it. You wanna have something with some stretch to it. So this is doll head fabric, um, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Again, you could use another old t-shirt, maybe even a different color, but I like having skin tones. So that's what I have. And then you will need my free pattern and you can get that there's a link below if you want to get your own free pattern i also have a needle and thread and some nice fabric scissors and one thing that i use for this because it's a little pocket doll is i use these little felt balls um, i use these for the core in the waldorf doll head you totally don't have to use them but i think it's just nice it saves me so much time you could do a traditional waldorf doll head where you like make the core by taking wool that you wrap tightly and wrap it in string and it's complicated when it's this tiny so I just use this and it works out perfectly. And again, I'll link it down below. So let's get started. All right, my friends, the first thing we are going to do is get working on the body, the heart shape. I have my fabric, I have my t-shirt is turned inside out. That means right sides together. The part that I want on the outside is actually going to be facing on the inside now. Now, if you have a solid t-shirt like I do, it doesn't matter that much, but hey, we're going with it. So I have it right sides together. I have my pattern all cut out. And there are little marks on it that show you in the pattern where to start and stop cutting. So I marked those onto this and I will mark them again onto my fabric. So one thing that you can do is pin your pattern in place with your fabric as you trace it out. That just helps keep anything from shifting. And literally you guys, I just use a regular ballpoint pen because I'm gonna sew and cut the fabric and turn it inside out anyway and you won't be able to see it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trace all around the fabric, all around the heart, not the fabric. Trace, trace, trace. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you do wanna be able to see it, right? If you're gonna be using, especially on a sewing machine, you don't wanna be like guessing where the lines are. So I have it all traced out and I'm going to actually remove this. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna mark on here that it says this is where I start and stop this is where I start and stop. You can pick either side to start on. Okay, and then I'm gonna pin my fabric together. And now you have two options. If you have a sewing machine, you just zip around it, right? You start here, sew all the way until you get to here, done. If you are going to be doing this by hand, what you wanna do before you do anything, don't cut it out, right? Even if you're doing it on a sewing machine, don't cut it out yet, sew before you cut. But if you're doing it by hand, you're gonna start on one side and just do a running stitch all the way around, tracing it out, then cut out your heart and then do a whip stitch around that seam to reinforce it. Whenever you are sewing it by hand, I'm gonna tell you this time and again, you wanna sew it twice, trust me. So I'm gonna pop this onto my sewing machine and sew around it quickly. If I come to a sharp edge like this where I can't necessarily get my fabric turned around in time, I will just lift up the foot, leave the needle in the fabric and adjust my fabric as I sew. But I'm gonna sew this and then I'll come and check back. This is it, I sewed all along. I actually sewed along on the inside, so that would be my recommendation instead of sewing along on the outside, but you do you. And you always sew and then cut whenever you're making a doll like this. So I sewed it all together and now I'm just gonna cut it out and then we'll check back in. It is all cut out. Um, I left about a quarter inch seam allowance along all sides. You wanna make sure that you don't cut it too close to the, the seam, otherwise it could split and that would be really sad. Another thing you wanna think about is I traced my pattern out and I sewed it so that the stretch is going vertically. You always want your stretch to go vertically with this. And how can you tell you pull? 
it stretches way more than if you pull this way, okay? So you're going to just turn it inside out, the right side out, I mean. And you might need to get, you can use a pen, obviously the pointer, the ink isn't gonna come out right now, I don't have it open. Um, you can use a chopstick, whatever you would like, whatever you have on hand. And this is the start of our little doll. So right in here is where we're gonna nestle the doll's head. And it's gonna be so cute and sweet. So it's stuffed, or it's sewn all together, so now it's time to stuff it. So I'm just gonna grab my wool and try not to do too much at once, right? Just go slow. You do have a nice big opening, so stuffing is actually gonna be pretty easy. Um, and since it is such a stretchy material, you don't wanna overstuff it but you also don't wanna have it to where, after being played with for a little bit, where it just starts to feel kind of empty. So just try and find a nice balance. I would say you want it to feel like maybe that part of your hand, right? It has a little bit of give, but it's still pretty firm. So we're gonna just stuff away. And again, we don't have to overstuff it right now. We can wait and see what it's gonna look like once we have the head and we can always add more before we sew the head on. But look, how cute is that already? so sweet. So I'm just going to keep stuffing and then we'll start working on the head. So we are ready to make the head and I mentioned that I'm just going to use one of these little tiny felt balls and that's going to be the core. It's nice and firm. If you want to make a traditional Waldorf head, you totally can. You just take strips of wool and you wrap it really tightly in cotton string to make a really solid core and then you wrap it um, in more wool on top of that. But instead, we're just going to save that step and we're just gonna take our little felt ball and start wrapping it in wool. And you can find the dimensions and the circumference of what you want it to be in the pattern that I have. It's linked below if you wanna grab it. Okay, and so I'm just wrapping, you can see I'm taking a few of the, um, just some sheets of wool, right? That are long enough to where they would go over. And you can always stretch them and open them up and pull them down a little bit but I'm putting it over the top in the same place every time and then gathering it down at the base like that. That's gonna just slowly start forming the neck. So I'm gonna keep going until it seems, and it needs to just be a little bit bigger and I'll measure it, of course. You always wanna make sure that you measure it so that it is the circumference that you need it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna double check on this, make sure we're on target with the right size and then I'll come right back. So this looks pretty good. We're right where we need to be. And you can see it's soft, but then you get to the felt ball and it's a nice strong core. That's what you want. So I have my cotton string and I am just going to wrap it right around the base. I always wrap it around twice of where you want the neck to be. And then this is the part where you pull it really tight, right? Cause you're just defining the neck. So you're gonna pull it nice and tight and then tie it in a knot. And you'll notice that the wool that's at the base is kind of fluffing up around it. And that's fine, I'll just pull it down. This is just the basic shape, right? And you can pull some of this wool out that's along the bottom. You don't need that once the head is formed. You wanna also make sure that it's round, right? You don't wanna have a funky shaped head because you won't really be able to change it. So just adjust it as you need to. You can wrap wool. Maybe you could even wrap it around in a circle first. I like to just go over with sheets and I feel like that always gives me a nice round head. Okay, so now I have, this is the cotton stocking net. I cut it um, and then I sewed one end shut. I sewed it with my sewing machine, but you can sew it by hand if you want to. And then you're just gonna turn that so that the seam is on the inside, right? And then you're just gonna put it over the wool head. And so if you don't have a cotton, this cotton stocking net, you could use literally an old sock. <laughs> I've totally done it before. You might have to cut it and sew it a little bit, but that would work just as giving you a nice layer between the wool and the doll um, skin fabric that you're gonna use. So again, I have just a nice strand of cotton thread. You can wrap this one around twice if you want to. I'm just gonna go once. And you're gonna, again, tie it really tightly around where you want the neck to be. And so I tie it really tightly. And then I actually go through and I just pull the cotton stocking net down a little bit. Right, you can see how it's bunched up a little bit. That's fine, I'll pull it down so it's nice and just a little bit tighter. So this is going to be the face of my doll, right? And then this is gonna be the back of the head. So now that this is done, it's a cute little bundle. You can trim these strings if you want to, you can do it later. 
you are going to take, this is the fabric that we're going to use for the doll skin for the head. Um, and you wanna find where the stretch is. So if I pull it this way, it's pretty stretchy. And if I pull it this way, you see how it has less stretch? So I want the stretch to be going vertical, vertically, up and down. So I have it folded in half. You're going to take the doll head, find out where you're gonna have the front of the face. So this is gonna be the front of the face. I'm gonna put that right up against the fold, right? And then I just use, I'm just using this marker, right? It's gonna be on the inside, so it's fine if you can see it. And I'm gonna start right about here, right about, you know, where the forehead would be, maybe even the nose a little bit. And I'm tracing it very close. I'm not giving it a lot of wiggle room because I actually want this little cover that I'm gonna sew to compress this down a little bit. So you can see I traced down pretty far because once you sew it, it's gonna shrink back up, right? And you don't want it to be too short. So now I'm gonna take it off and you can see this is the line that I drew. So it's a pretty, pretty, you know, similar portrait shape. Um, but you can see it's definitely smaller. So you are going to have to kind of squeeze this over the doll's head, but that's good. That's what you want. So this is what I'm going to sew. I'm going to pop it onto my sewing machine and just sew all around. I'll probably stop right about here, but I'll cut this just so there's a little bit of extra fabric. Now, if you are sewing this by hand, what you would do is trace it out like this. Don't cut anything out first. Sew all along here in like a running stitch then cut it out, leave a quarter inch seam, and then do a whip stitch just to secure the seam. If you are doing this on your sewing machine, sewing around at once with your machine should be strong enough. So I'm gonna sew this. Okay, we sewed all around, and now I'm going to cut it out. So I'm gonna cut it out, leaving about a quarter of an inch. You don't wanna push the seams too much by cutting it too close. And so you're just gonna cut it all the way out. Like I said, I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra fabric at the bottom. And now I will turn it right side out. And you can use a little, um, you can use a chopstick if you need to, anything like that. And you'll notice I use, you can see, I used a different color string, but that's fine because we're gonna put a cute little hat on the doll so you won't even be able to see the seam at all. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you turn it right side out. Make sure those seams are nice and poked out. Awesome. And so this is gonna be the face, right? So now this is the fun part. You can see this looks a lot smaller than this. You have to just go with it, right? You will leave it on. So the reason I left this extra fabric with this open is so that I can use this to kind of pull it down and on. So I'm gonna have this fit on top of this. It's gonna be snug, that's what I want. And we'll check back in and we're almost done. This came together really quickly, right? Well, my friends, wouldn't you know it, I went and I recorded an entire video showing you how to finish this doll. And then when I went back through to edit it, the part where I sewed the body, the head onto the body and onward had no sound. <laughs> Amateur moment, but we are back. No worries. I'm going to show you how to do it another way, right? I'm going to show you again. It's just going to have a different fabric for the body. So don't worry. In the meantime, after I made this one, this one is actually my little prototype. I remember I used t-shirt material. Um, it still, it turned out super cute, even though it was just the one I was doing to figure it all out. And then this was my kind of final version for my Valentine's Day bundle collection that I'm a part of that is in um, the link in my bio. So with this one, I actually used a fabric that doesn't have as much stretch, but it's still, oh, I just love the way that it came together. So both types of fabric will work, and I actually like it better without a face. So I'm not going to show you how to do the face because I think it's easier um, and it's cuter just having maybe like a little bit of blush or something like that. So I'm going to continue and show you how to attach the head onto the body and finish your doll, but just know that it's going to have a different color fabric on the body. Okay, so this is the part where you'll really notice your doll starting to come together. We have the head is finished, the body is stuffed, it has this opening at the top. Um, what we are going to do now is just stuff the neck, so all the way up to this line, right where you see the white string, into the doll body, and then we will sew it on, and you are almost all done. So you can see it took a little bit of convincing to get in there, but it all worked out. I ended up using a pencil to just help me kind of nudge the um, neck in a little bit easier and you can use a chopstick or anything like that that you have on hand but it will come together just move slowly and have patience so now i have a long length of thread um, it matches the heart body color 
so that it'll be nice and invisible. And what I'm gonna do, so it's knotted on one end, the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of go up and in through this opening. I'm just going into the heart fabric and I'm just gonna pull it through and tuck, this is a little tag along, and tuck that string in. Um, so that's just gonna help, and I always keep this, I actually love to have like a little pencil or a chopstick handy for this part because it helps tuck things in really easily. So tuck the knot in, and a ladder stitch is when you make parallel stitches. So we're gonna do one stitch on the heart body, one stitch on the head, one stitch on the heart body, one stitch on the head, and if you make them small enough, they'll be come pretty invisible. So you can see I'm going in and I'm just making a small tiny stitch on the head. And that is the beginning of this stitch is parallel to the stitch that I just did on the heart. So one thing is you don't want to pull too hard at first because otherwise you could end up making a weird little jagged seam as you're sewing. So I have the string, it's in the head fabric right now and parallel to that, I'm gonna have it, the needle go into the heart fabric and just make one tiny little stitch. So I'm going to work my way all the way around and the needle is going in just above that white thread that formed the neck when we made the head. One thing you want to be really mindful of is make sure that your fabric is folded under a little bit on the heart body because it's an unfinished seam, right? So we don't want it fraying or coming apart. So make sure as you go that you are folding that fabric in a little bit. Now with the t-shirt doll, I had to really keep working, right? Because the fabric wanted to come unfolded. It didn't have a lot of structure to it, but because this is a stiffer fabric, it's actually staying folded in a lot easier. But you can, you know, you can make anything work, but it's just something to be aware of. So I'm going to just work my way around and I'll show you what I do when I get to the side. Okay, but I'm just going to keep sewing all the way along. So far I've sewed the ladder stitch all the way along the front and you can see it's nice and connected. You can't really see any seam. And now I'm coming to the part where you might have a space open along this I'm gonna call it the shoulder seam of the heart body. If that is the case, then you'll just use a ladder stitch to stitch up both sides kind of as you sew. So mine actually comes together really well, and I think it's just because the neck and the head width matches the gap. Now, it wasn't the case on some of the other ones I made, um, so I had to just do a few stitches along here, which is just fine. So if that happens to you, if you're on one side of the fabric, just make a little side, um, a little stitch on this side and go back and forth until it's all closed up. But because this looks pretty good, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one stitch into this head fabric. And then I'm gonna go through this side and this side, right? So I'm bringing those shoulder seams together by just having that one stitch go through both sides. And it comes right together. Do you see how easy that, that was? And so now when I get onto the back, I wanna make sure again that this fabric is folded under. So if it's not, this is a great time, right? You can even tuck, take your pencil, we'll tuck these longer strings in, and then I'll just kind of keep pulling this up until it gets to where we need it to be, okay? And then we'll just keep sewing. So we're gonna do, keep going with our ladder stitches all the way around until we get back to where we started. And then we'll check in again. Yay! We did it! We sewed our little head on it. We went all the way around. And this is when you can kind of even out the fluff, the stuffing a little bit, make sure it all looks good. Now what you want to do is sew around one more time with the ladder stitches. It, you have to be a little bit less precise because you already have it sewed on, but sewing it on one more time is just going to guarantee strength against toddlers who will play with it way rougher than you could even imagine. I'll never forget when I made my first doll and then I saw my kid really like shake it and I was like, oh my gosh, terrified. So sew around one more time and then you are almost done. So I finished sewing around the head twice and now I'm going to just make a tiny, I'm gonna go into the fabric where I was, make a loop and then have my needle go up and through the loop and that's just gonna make a little knot. And then I'm gonna do that one more time go through some fabric, make a loop up and through the loop. And so that forms the knot. And now to keep your little tail hidden, 
you are going to, it always feels so wrong. I feel like I'm hurting the doll. <laughs> You're going to put the needle through the neck and it can come out anywhere. And you are just going to pull just a little bit. I've got my scissors, pull a little bit and then cut, and then it'll get sucked right back up into the doll. So always be really mindful, right? Because you don't want to accidentally cut the doll. I've done that before. Okay. So now we're going to get ready to sew your little hat on. Now what I did is I cut out the fabric, right? It's just a cone shape and I folded it and I pinned it right sides together to make this nice long triangle. And I just sewed it, I cut it out and then I sewed it, which usually I tell you not to do, but with this you can. So cut out your pattern. You just need one of the little cone triangles and then you sew up about a quarter of an inch all the way to make a little cone. And then we're gonna turn it right side out. Have a little pencil or a chopstick handy cause you're gonna need to poke the pointy part out. And again, go slow. You don't wanna bust any seams. You don't wanna poke through. And that looks pretty good. There might be a little bit more in there. That looks good to me. Okay, so now this is easy peasy to sew it on. We are just going to do a blanket stitch. And I feel like there's still a little bit more in there. We're going to do a blanket stitch. And you can adjust how tall your cat, your little hat is pretty easily. So to finish the edge a little bit and to make it so that we don't have a lot of fraying, we're just going to fold it in like this. And just as you go, right? So you don't want to fold it in too much because then it might not fit on your doll's head. So always make sure that you're measuring and adjusting and see if I fold it in too much like that, then it won't fit well. So I'm going to fiddle with it a little bit and see, and then I'll show you how to do a blanket stitch to sew it on. Alrighty, we've got the little hat on there. I took my needle and my thread and I just went up and under the hat and then I tucked the end of the thread into the hat. And now we're going to do a blanket stitch all around. So I always like to start at the back of the head just while you get, you know, the stitch all figured out. <laughs> that way, if you have any mistakes, it's never as visible. So when you're doing a blanket stitch onto the hat, you are always going to be going down, like from the hat down into the head. So I want to try and keep them all even. So I'm making like a quarter inch. They're about a quarter of an inch apart. So I go down and I come through the head. And then before I pull this string totally taut, I just slip my needle under and through that loop. And that just creates a little decorative stitch. Now you totally don't have to do this. This is an optional stitch to do. You could just go through and sew this little hat on with a different type of stitch. Maybe one that's a little bit easier. You could do a whip stitch, you could do a running stitch. But I like, you can tell on here, I did a little contrasting colored thread with the red. This one I'm just doing all green. So you can do whatever works best for you, but I'm gonna just go around and when I'm sticking my needle in through the hat, I'm also making sure I'm going through the head fabric as well. Cause I wanna make sure that I'm sewing them all together. And this is just a little bit of a decorative stitch, but it'll add a cute touch. So I'm gonna just go all the way around and then our doll is almost all finished, you guys. So I have this beeswax crayon. It's linked in the pattern. Um, I can also link it below. And I always just use it with a Q-tip. They say to use it with a little piece, scrap piece of fabric, but I just feel like a Q-tip because it's round, it gives me a little bit more control and it's just like more of the shape of what I'm going for. So I just rub the Q-tip with the blush crayon. And then this is the part where it's like, there's no turning back. So you just kind of have to commit. So just think about where you want the little blush to be. You can go in little circles if you want. You can do a little line. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Can you even handle it? And then you'll just have to put more on each time you do it. And so then you do the other side. And you could mark it if you're like worried about being super specific, but I feel like handmade toys are meant to just have a little bit of uniqueness in each one. So I'm not too worried if they're perfect or if they're, you know, too even or anything. And so then after I do that, I just take a little bit of cloth and just wipe it a little. How cute is that? I think the blush just really adds such a sweet little completion to it. Don't you? There you go. You did it. All right, everyone, we did it. This video tutorial took a little bit of extra work with sound issues and all of that, but we did it. So we started making this sweet one, right? This was my prototype and I learned a lot. 
If you're going to use a t-shirt fabric that's a little bit lighter in color, maybe choose a lighter skin color just because you can see the neck fabric through it, which it doesn't really bother me, but if you want it to be super perfect, just something to keep in mind. So it will totally work with old t-shirts. You can add a sweet little face if you want to. Maybe I'll make another video for you showing you how to do that. Or you can just add some sweet little blush. So we have made three of these little heart dolls together. And I think that they're just so sweet. They will be so well loved by the kiddos in your life. There is a link below in the description where you can buy your very own pattern and it's in a Valentine's Day bundle. So there are a ton of other amazing ideas like different crafts and songs and stories and poems and recipes, all different ways that you can celebrate Valentine's Day with your family this year and years to come. I hope that you love making your very own pocket heart dolls and I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel and keep crafting with me. You've got this. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time.